Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Um, so I'm very happy to uh, able to do this few uh, Facebook Live uh, from uh, India. So there is a, a little better internet connection, and so far, so very happy. So. I hope uh, yesterday's uh, Facebook Live was uh, helpful. Uh, this is something that uh, the social justice and uh, finding your own uh, true voice, your own inner strength and clarity, I think they all are very much connected with the, our own practices and our own uh, inner sources so so that was my reflection of the week so um, I hope it was helpful so today <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, uh, these two uh, wonderful master that uh, lived around late seven eight beginning of eighth century so these are the dates are very old so very very specific specifically to say it's difficult so very early so and there are two one of the greatest master in a Dzogchen tradition particularly in a burn tradition and the uh, reason why i'm trying wanted to tell this story first of all of course i love this story and the second is also that uh, these two great masters and uh, the masters of great perfection, Dzogchen, uh, who lived so many, so many years ago, uh, who are, who is also the sources of these lineages and trans great transmissions. Even these masters, you know, uh, like they sometimes these are obstacles in the spiritual practices one very very specific obstacles that kind of interferes their spiritual uh, development their achievement of enlightenment and so so this is about like we have to be really aware of our uh, even our success um, that can be an obstacle unless you recognize it, uh, accommodate well, make best use of out of it, more enlightened use, use out of it, they can be obstacle. Um, so these two, the, so, so basically this is a story about two masters, uh, Taperitsa uh, and uh, his student Nangjir Lopo. The story is that um, that Najir Lopo was around uh, King period of King Tibetan King Tisong Bese was a very um, famous, um, uh, very uh, high scholar. He knows a lot, a lot of realization, and um, at the same period, and he also have a sponsor that uh, who who was very this very rich um, a sponsor uh, called. Chukpo Yungdung Jansi. So, so this is the period around that time, the Tibetan King Tison Dezhe. So, so since uh, the the, the, the Nanshi Lupa was a very powerful scholar and connected with this uh, the, uh, this big uh, rich sponsor, and also the rich sponsor himself, the Chukpo Yungdung Jansi, was also a very very powerful person at that time. So. <clears throat> So what does that mean? That means one who is full of knowledge, education, mastered in many things, also have a lot of realization, and on the other hand, the sponsor who was also very well known, powerful, rich. But these two people are kind of having a problem with, in a way, with their success, with their what they have, their richness with their knowledge. So Tapiritsa came specifically to help them uh, overcome their obstacles and obstacles of pride and ego, 
Um, so, so basically, it's like a very much like a pride and ego. And uh, so, Tapir is transformed as a child, a young child who is very um, smart, uh, very flexible, very active, engaging, uh, just very, very just beautiful young boy. And then he wandering around that, in that village of Shangjung and meets with uh, this uh, rich person. And uh, he's, the rich person asks him, what are you doing? And uh, Tabri says, I, I'm not doing nothing, so why don't you work? And, uh, well, you know, I don't have a work. And so, well, I'll give you a work. So he, he, he Tabri says, as the, the king, the rich man does not know who was a Tabri. He was just manifest as, as a young boy, um, very flexible, very smart. And so he began to work there, and he began to take his all the yaks and ships and and the animals into the mountain where the mount idea is that the mountain where uh, Nangjirubu was meditating in the cave. So he was trying to go in that area to encounter him. So so one day, uh, so the young boy goes up in the mountain and nearby the cave of uh, Nangjirubu. And then uh, when the, uh, it goes by there and Nangjirubu, Yogi comes out of the cave and he sees this young boy. He says, uh, uh, "What are you doing here?" So, so this is the way their encounter begins, and um, so, so Tapiritsa was young boy who looked very smart, and Nagjulubu came out and he was trying to have a dialogue, and so the, when they were having a dialogue, somehow. Uh, the yogi did not like the the young kid mm, very much because the young kid was uh, uh, always uh, seems like a, somebody who who knows a lot of things and uh, so he did not like it very much and so he began to ask some of these questions so these are the questions that I wanted to basically read some of the questions here so The Nangjir Lopo asks the young boy, uh, who is your teacher? Because the reason why he was asking these questions was he kind of knew this boy was not just ordinary boy and uh, kind of attacking, challenging Nangjir Yogi a little bit. So he, was, he did not like that idea very much. So he asked, who is your teacher? What is your practice? Uh, and what is your meditation? What you are carrying in your bag? And how, why you are behaving like this? So this is like a very, uh, like a discussion basically. And then uh, the child answers, uh, my teacher is, the, all these appearances are my teacher. So basically clearly, that every experiences of life uh, that we are able to learn, right? So, so basically, the child is saying this: everything what I see and feel and experiences is my teacher. Lopen ditra nangwayi nyamso number mitolne gomba kamsum nangseyi kuru number tokbayi chopa duvi kholpoyi. So, um, and my practice is uh, no thoughts. So. Whenever I'm not thinking, uh, that's my meditative practice. No thought is my practice. Just think about this. You know, like when we are talking about in our meditation of three pills, we talk about uh, a spaciousness of the mind. That means no thought. Silence of the speech means no thoughts also, in no inner voices in dialogue, right? So, so says, no thought is my practice. And uh, my meditation, yeah, so my meditation is, so it says, it says uh, it's all my experiences are like meditation. All the appearances are my meditation also, like as my teacher. And what I'm carrying is, I'm carrying all my thoughts. So I think this is uh, interesting that uh, if you look at in our life, that 
we carry so much our pain. We carry so much our ideas, limited ideas. We carry so much our wounds. We carry so much our hopes. But these all are different pat patterns of hope, of the wound of the past, uh, conditions of the past, uh, blockages of the present, and hope of the future. Somehow we are carrying all different forms of thoughts. That's our bag, basically. <coughs> That's our bag that we are carrying. So that this is exactly what uh, the young boy is saying. What I'm carrying is my thoughts. And uh, my work is I'm a servant of uh, all the sentient beings. Chopadui, uh, Kolpe, I'm I am servant of everybody. So basically I am helping everybody. I'm working for everybody. So then uh, the the yogi asks, so if you're if the old appearances are your teacher, then must that must mean that you don't have a teacher. If you are practicing uh, thoughtless, so that means you don't need a clothes and food. So if your meditation is all these experiences and appearances, so that means you don't meditate. Uh, or maybe that means you, you achieve realization without meditation. Cholok, Cholok, so if you're carrying all the thoughts, that means uh, you don't ha internally that you don't have a desire. Maybe you have uh, ceases, ceases all the desires. If you are like a servant of all the sentient beings, then uh, maybe you're not, you don't no longer have a sufferings. I guess that what does that mean is basically, um, all our actions are very much based on our pain and sufferings. So, yes. So then, in that point, uh, the yogi. <coughs> Oh, sorry, the, the, so that's what the yogi said. Then, uh, what does uh, the young boy said? Then, uh, if you don't understand that all appearances are your teacher, then who taught the first Buddha? The primordial Buddha, the Kundusangpo. Who taught Kundusangpo? If, if the all appearances are not your teacher. <coughs> Nyamlen number metoi, Jila Topa Matube, Tokche Genoa, Tamje Nyamleme. So all the conceptual mind, it's not a meditation because in the base there is no conceptual mind. So if there is a, a bias, if there is a, a dualistic view in in the in the in the essence uh, then that is not a meditation so so what is my meditation it's all appearances uh, without duality without judging without taking one in and uh, rejecting other ones so there is no sense of duality and uh, so in my in my bag i'm carrying thoughts and the basena the basena namto me so if uh, there is no uh, thoughts uh, then if there is no thought if there is no conceptual mind then the meditation arises
So these are like a kind of very philosophical and very like a, a some sense of it, like a little bit like an attack to 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 yogi. So yogi is that point yogi is getting very frustrated. So basically, this young boy uh, is talking to me this way um, because uh, I am the most well-known scholar yogi. Uh, in all, in whole this Xiangyong area, and this young boy is attacking, so he's getting very frustrated. Um, so then uh, the the yogi says, if you if you are that smart, if you are that if you know that much, so then uh, tomorrow morning we are going to go to the the king. Uh, and we are going to debate in front of the king. And uh, so if you uh, win, then you become my teacher. Uh, if I win, then I'm going to have you, uh, my king punish you. So, so when the, so the, that was like a, uh, the yogi uh, suggestion to the young boy, and the young boy in a way like a surprisingly, uh, kind of laugh because laughter and then he um, jump up in the sky and uh, like uh, he in in the circle of rainbow at that point the yogi clearly knew that uh, this is a very very special young boy and uh, um, teacher so and then he just did his uh, procession and he said, uh, I apologize, I, I have created a bad negative speech karma um, uh, attacking you this way. So, and so we, they were having conversation at that point and the king, the, the rich man, the Yung Lu Jansen, he also came up because the, all the, the sheep and everything was kind of wandering around in the mountains and uh, getting lost, and he heard it was getting lost, so then he comes there kind of getting mad at the child and coming up there, and then he saw that Nangjilopo Yogi and the, the child was having a dialogue. And then he said, oh, why, why are you just sitting here? Do you, don't you notice all the animals are just kind of running around everywhere? And then that point, uh, the yogis, because yogi is the, the teacher of the, the rich man also, he said, Oh my God, what you have done, what we have both have done, we have created a lot of bad karmas here. This uh, child is a, a, a realized being, uh, is a master, and so we have created a lot of uh, bad karma. So they both did uh, prostration and confession uh, to, the uh, to the child, and child was already up in the in the rainbow circle there, and um, so uh, they both request Tapirita uh, or the child uh, a teaching. So then, the, at that point, uh, what the teaching was taught, what what is called Lekpashi Dhamma, Lekpashi Dhamma, which basically means. Uh, the teachings of for goodness. So this is not what I'm going to talk uh, this time, at least not now, but I, maybe some point in the near future I might talk a little bit about what this for goodness is, is about. But uh, so that's how kind of more or less the uh, story is. <clears throat> so in short, I think what I'm trying to say here is that both um, yogi and this rich person, uh, their success, uh, their value, where one, where the yogi uh, have learned a lot, uh, understands a lot, a lot of knowledge, a lot of experiences, but these knowledge and experiences becoming a source of pride, a cause of pride, a cause of development of ego, uh, instead of uh, overcoming 
um, the identity and the ego, but it was helping to build the identity and ego. So that that is, I think, the one very important important thing. And and on the other hand, the, this rich uh, man, Yung Lung Jianse, who was also a successful, and his success was that he was whatever all the businesses and whatever he was doing, he managed to become very successful and become rich. So his wealth, his fame, his richness became a problem for him. It became, instead of being free from them, instead of enjoying with it, instead of it supporting his liberation and freedom, but it became his conditions and his, his obstacles. So, so successes sometimes becomes our uh, obstacles of personal liberation, freedom, and enlightened achievement of enlightenment. So basically, so this is what the story is about. I think the bottom line story is about that. So that's how, that's why the Najilopo came, I said the Tabritsa came to teach them. So, so I think this is what the same thing that if we reflect in our own life, uh, this very moment, um, um, first of all, maybe the gifts of our life, everything the universe has given to you, a life, a body, a speech, a mind, a connection, family, excesses, resources, knowledge, teachers, friends, an incredible amount of uh, gift and opportunities that uh, the universe, the enlightened beings, Buddhas, uh, has given us. So, so are you uh, aware of it? Are you appreciative of it? Do you count your gifts of life? Do you recognize them? Do, does it make you feel grateful? Does it make you open your heart, warm your heart? Does it make you appreciate life? Does it make you share with others? Does, you, does it make you feel joyful, the freedom? Or does these all gifts of life that you don't even have eyes to see them, this, uh, to feel them, to acknowledge them, to recognize them, to appreciate them, to share them, to benefit by it, able to give to others that share with others, others that you wanted to share, others that you know somebody needs it. Are you able to do that? Or even maybe in some cases, what you have is the main obstacle for your life. Are your everything what you have, are they turning into obstacles of your life? Which is not necessarily not possible. It's a, Sometimes it's possible what you have, it's a problem. So some, some cases, not everybody deserves everything. Sometimes maybe everybody has things that that we are not able to digest, able to process, able to benefit from. So unless the di digestion, uh, benef benefiting from it, comes from the awareness of understanding or the value of what you have, the gifts of life, what you have in your life. I think, <clears throat> I think that is very, very important uh, to, to recognize. I hope this moment we, we recognize that. So, so maybe uh, before we finish, I think maybe we can uh, just uh, sit a little bit, moment of quiet, quietness, a moment of silence and reflect on uh, everything that we have in our life, that it's a gift in our life. <clears throat> so uh, sit comfortably.
Bring your full attention inward. Be aware of the stillness. Feel the stillness. Be aware and feel the inner silence. Like you almost hear it, you feel it, you feel that in your body. <coughs> In that inner stillness, in that inner silence, feel the openness, the spaciousness, and the presence of warmth in that sacred space. A warmth, a joy, of being in this moment. And feel the collective power of this meditation that we are all are practicing together this moment. That we all are supporting each other this moment, this moment of stillness, this moment of silence, this moment of warmth of being, a joy of being, the connectedness in this being through this a sacred cyber sangha. Feel this connection with everyone. Feel that you are supported by everyone. And also send your support to everyone. Yes, I'm open to everyone. I am sending my support to everyone, to all of you. I'm sending my warmth to all of you. Just feel this a warmth that moving from each other and expanding it. A connection of warmth. A warmth of basic sense of this being.
Now for a moment, reflect in your life. Count or be aware all your strength. Your qualities, what you're good at. Count your knowledge, skills. What you are gifted. What is your success? What you possess or you have, do all these. It's benefiting you, helping you in your path. Are you able to help others through these? Are they fully manifesting in your life or do you recognize the importance of manifesting fully these qualities in your life? Selflessly manifesting in your life? Less condition, with less conditions you're manifesting in your life or unconditionally manifesting in your life? Or the biggest question is, are, are some of these becoming an obstacle of your, your life? Makes you unhappy, makes you get confused, makes you get lost. like the story we just told. So this is the moment, to, just for a moment, to self-reflect that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I think, uh, um, I hope that uh, this meditation was useful. So uh, maybe once again, you know, always, I always I'm very happy to always uh, uh, read the uh, feedbacks. So um, that helps a lot. So uh, how was the meditation? Um, did you like the story? What did you learn from this story of Tapritsar and Nangyulopo?
because in the end of the day that every story is when you hear a story it tells something about the way you understand the story it tells you something about yourself and when you're trying to curious about understand the story and see how this story can benefit you or what, how you need to apply this story in your life then you see it also <clears throat> so uh, during this meditation are you able to reflect your life do you see your strength your power your knowledge your skills your successes are you able to fully manifest them if you're not able to fully manifest them of course this this is a good question i want you to fully manifest what i have but if you are manifesting maybe everything is going wonderful in your life somehow the right timing right situation everything is good that you have a great success of things that you do in your life but then the big question comes as part of the story are these successes helping you not every success helps maybe some success you wish you did not have it those who cannot digest that those who cannot benefit that like a winning a big lottery many cases of people who are winning the lottery they end up with not good life because not everybody is able to digest things so are you digesting your successes if not then it's good to reflect that it's never late so these are the, i think i think the the story of the nanjin rupa and tapriza this is what it tells us so i hope that uh, was a uh, kind of uh, helpful <clears throat> maybe just the the few points in some, some sense um I think maybe just a few points in the beginning is very much like uh, that uh, all the appearances of my teacher. I think this is this is what Tapirita said. Nangwa ditra lopeng. So all the appearances are my teacher. Is it true for you? every single day that when you see something when you hear something do they teach you something do do they open you do they open your heart do they touch your heart do you do they make you feel gr gratefulness do they make make you feel being generous do you want to sh do you feel the sh sharing something giving something do you feel connecting something does it makes you just tears comes to see a child a two a loving people a a a, a, a old needy person or do you become a blind or does it agitates you or do it makes you feel angry i mean all these are possibilities are there because 
whatever what you're feeling, whatever experience you're having, it's teaching you something. It's telling you something. But are you learning something from what it's teaching you? So this is what it's saying. Lope didar nawai. Nyamso nampar mitol ne. I practice thoughtless. <clears throat> I practice thoughtless. If you look in every moment, every moment in our life, we are practicing our pain, our desire, our needs. Every moment you're looking at somebody, like you're going to the big shopping mall, you're not just enjoying something what is there in the window displayed there, appreciating a beautiful art, color, texture, the details. You wanted to possess it. You wanted to, you see the wall in your kitchen to hang. You see, you immediately associate yourself with that beautiful piece of art. It has to me and the art, my art in my place. What are you learning? Are you learning? See how much desires, needs you feel? Or are you learning that just appreciating some beautiful piece of art exists in the universe? Its existence, appreciating its existence, appreciating your sense of being with no thoughts. So no thought is my meditation. So I want all of you to next couple of days think that, no thought. When I was growing up in the monastery, you know, even the monastery, there's a lot of rituals, maybe sometimes too much rituals. Instead of having in the monastery a silent meditation of silence for a couple of hours a day. Too many chant, too many uh, rituals, basically. So I could, when I was growing up, I have few older friends who are uh, come came teaching with me when I was as a teenager. I was twelve, thirteen years old, and uh, they are like in their fifties and sixties. And I remember very clearly during in the in the monastery during the rituals, uh, whole day rituals, singing, praying. And there will remain a moment of silence. They will just sit silence. What they are doing? They are trying to be aware of their thoughtless state of mind. Which in the when I talk about three precious pill, I talk about spacious, sacred spaciousness. I am in that particular moment aware of my sacred spaciousness. I'm just simply open of this space of nothingness and everything presents in there. Is it difficult? Not it's difficult to understand. Not it's difficult to learn about it. But maybe it is difficult for people to apply it. But you cannot say to whom it's difficult to apply. Not necessarily as some simple person who have not learned anything. It might be very easy to that person to apply that. But it might be also a very difficult person to apply who have went to the monastery academic for whole life. So it's not, a, it's not a guarantee that somebody who have learned a lot will have an easier time that somebody who have not learned anything have a harder, harder time. No. Could be other way around too.
I mean, who can tell? Only you. You can tell. Is it hard to you? Or it's easy to you? Gompa Kamsum Nang Yi. My meditation is every appearances. I'm looking at uh, uh, my iPhone screen right this moment. I see all these hearts, which is easier to meditate on than seeing an angry face. Sometimes I do. And uh, fortunately, not that often, but every now and then some angry face shows up there. And what I do? I accommodate somebody's frustration and pain in this moment. That's all I can do. Somebody is just unhappy, lonely, and happen to see somebody shows up in the Facebook Live, angry. Or, here we go, there's one there. <laughs> so it's like uh, appearances are my meditation. Because each appearances, it tell me something, right? I see a heart, that's one appearances. I see a faces that I recognize frequently who, you know, I mean, uh, the moment I'm on Facebook, you, you, some, some of you shows up. I recognize you. Makes me feel happy. So, excite me, feels me happy, feels me doubtful, feels me a little agitated. These are appearances, right? So life is very much like that. All appearances are my meditation. So question is, as to Taparita, is it true for you? How it can be true for you? It can only be true for you if you are aware of that moment, what's happening to you with these experiences. You see an image and it makes you feel angry. And you are aware that you are angry. Then you are also aware that I don't have to be angry. Then you, are aware, then you are aware maybe somebody is just unhappy today. Then I'm aware maybe somebody needs me today more than other people needs me. The awareness keeps on ex expanding itself, opening itself freeing itself, giving itself to the point that it will actually help those people. How often in our life we are trying to avoid people we don't care, we are angry at. Have you ever thought these people might be the really people who need you? They need probably you more than anybody else in your, their life. It's like a child. Every little child is kind of following the older kids. I don't know if you have a children, kids, that you, you, if you observe them, you, you watch them. They're following older kids. <coughs> the older kid is running and the younger is following. The older is running, younger is there's, there's a whole mala, a whole, the, whole mala of kids are following each other. And when they're following what they're doing, they're, they're teasing, they're bothering their elder, older kid. They're trying to get attention. The older kid does not know that and runs away. And the, the younger bothers them more. But if somebody is aware, to, instead of running away, turn back. 
moment of stillness, moment of silence, moment of spaciousness, moment of opening up, seeing, does somebody, can I help in this situation? Is it possible, can I help this person who is angry at me? If I respond with anger, so what is the differences? There's no differences. But if I respond with some sense of awareness, then appearance are turning my support. Appearance are turning, turning my meditation. They are my meditation, as Tapritsa says, Gompa Kamsum Nangsei. The other day, somebody said, "Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching Dzogchen in in uh, on the Facebook." Well, whatever you wanted to call it, this, I think it's it's quite simple to share, understand, and as we communicate, I hope that you understand what I'm saying. I hope it does clicks your mind. I hope that this helps you. If, if my communication <clears throat> are taking, this is the moment where I'm, I'm with, with my wife, sp spending some time um, together, being quiet, but during this moment I'm sharing uh, my moment with people that I feel is benefiting. And 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 that is what why I'm sharing. I'm not sharing for any other reasons. Some some people might teach one way, another way. It's fine. Everybody has their own way of doing. I respect every way of doing it. The important thing. Is not everybody has to do the same way. That's the beauty of different different persons. Because different people have different places, way of doing things. <clears throat> and people have to discover your own, own gift that you have and share that. When you feel, and of course you watch yourself, it's important, but I think important is to share because there are more people, it's benefiting. There are few people, maybe it's maybe making upset for whatever. And these few people who are making upset, they will be upset no matter what you do. It's just not happen to be upset to you because you don't appear to them. But at least you know, I think, so anyway, so the main point what I'm trying to say here is that appearances are your meditation. Gompa kamsum nangsei, kuru nambar tokpai. What I'm carrying is my thought. I love this. Neuroscience, a scientist, have findings of that. Carrying bag, just a bag, heavy bag, looking up the mountain, mountain immediately becomes higher. When you take out your bag, mountain immediately becomes lower, changes its height, perception of the height changes, because not the mountain is changing, not going higher or lower. But your weight on your back is getting more and less. The more or less the weight on your back changes your perception of reality. Same thing. Challenges of life. If you're, you're holding somebody's hand, immediately challenges becomes less. When you're alone, the challenges becomes higher. The challenge. Perception of challenges it changes how much support you have, how much support you feel or not.
So the bottom line is that we do carry a lot of weights. So do you carry a lot of weights? What is your weights? Can you take them out? And if you can take them out, then this is your practice. Chopa do we colpoins? My conduct is servant of others, sentient beings. I am a servant of others. And I think that's a beautiful, um, beautiful thought, beautiful idea that I am a servant of others. I am here to support somebody. I am here to help somebody. And if my heart opens more to help somebody, my heart is opening. When my heart is opening, I am also helping myself. The only way we can help ourselves when we open ourselves toward ourselves. The dynamic relationship helps to open each other. So can you see yourself as a true servant of others? A true servant of others. So, um, this this is the question. It's also the same way I was saying earlier. It's like a, any situation, even situation when somebody is challenging you, can I help? Am I able to help? I wanted to help. Am I able to help? Can I help? What I can help? How I can help? Maybe sometime doing nothing, even not responding it, might be good. Because many times, we would respond from our pain and anger and agitation. We talked yesterday about it. But if I am feeling strong, if I'm feeling clear, if I'm feeling open, if I am feeling giving, if I'm feeling I can accommodate somebody's pain, then maybe remaining silent is not a good thing. Remaining still is not a good thing because I need to, to act from that place of stillness. I need to, to speak from that place of silence. I need to, to be creative that place of spaciousness, spaciousness of my mind. I cannot be still, just passive still and silence and, and not do anything. Because I do feel openness, I do feel clarity, I do feel confidence, I do know what I can do, I do know how I can help, which the self does not involve in that. I'm free from my own pain in that moment, so I can help. So this, this, these are the teaching. It's a beautiful teaching, so I hope uh, that all of you it makes some sense. So I, I'm not sure uh, when I will be able to do the next one, uh, but maybe um, I will do in few days. And uh, but I will definitely announce on my Facebook page and uh, when I will be do and what I will be speaking. And meanwhile, I hope that all of my Facebook friends. Um, and all of you, we all know that we are connected, right? We are all connected. And it's just instant connection. This is amazing, right? Um, such a liberating and freedom experiences where no matter where you are, no matter uh, physical place where you are, time zone you are, um, which form you are, you know, you are, might be sitting, cooking something, you might be, 
I don't know, whatever you were doing, but we are connected. So I think this is amazing. And uh, so I definitely uh, I will be come back in the next couple of days and I'll announce one or two things in one time so that everybody knows. Maybe uh, we might change uh, the schedule. So I'm, my, my, I'm, my body is adjusting the time a little bit. Now I think I might able to stay a little late to um, usually around 9, 10, I'm, I'm gone. So, but maybe <clears throat> I will able to stay a little late uh, to do uh, uh, the Facebook so that the time zone we will be able to keep as, as, as if I was in the U.S. So thank you very much. Um, good day, good night, sleep well, good dream, good work, and uh, all good rest, whatever you're doing. Much love and blessing to all of you.